Hi all, I just wanted to share something with you that I came across right after I posted the previous video. Many have asked why I would share something by someone who expects to go through the three days of darkness, and why does the person who gives the three day darkness prophecy at the end not speak about the rapture that is supposed to happen before those three days. Well, I shared the prophecy because of the timing involved with it. It matches the patterns that we have seen in Jesus' resurrection and that of Israel's exodus. And when I see such an important pattern that repeats, I believe it is something to take notice of, irrespective of what the person who shares that information believes. The brother who gave this prophecy obviously does not believe in the rapture, and expects to go through those three days of darkness here on the earth, and he would not seem to expect to escape what is coming. That is why I believe he is crying and full of fear, and we know that only 10% of those that call themselves believers in Christ will be taken to receive new glorified bodies and then to come back as Jesus and the 24 elders did to work the harvest. Just after I posted the previous video I came across another one that aligns so much with what the Lord has been showing me that I just have to share this with you. There is a lot more detail provided in this one and it also provides a perspective from those who do believe in the rapture and who will be taken before the days of darkness descend over the earth. I hope this will bless you as we continue to watch and expect the soon return of our Lord and Savior. May our Heavenly Father abundantly bless you, and I look forward to meeting all of you in the air very soon. Hello and blessings to you, my brethren in Christ. I have a message about three days of darkness, and that message uh, these days has been really uh, delivered to many, many uh, God's children, including me, I received that I have to immediately buy oil lamps because there will be no electricity in those days. So uh, this is a message of warning to God's people, all of you who have really strong relationship with Christ, you know that something is up and that those three days of darkness are really coming to pass really really soon so i'm gonna read to you instructions and explanation about three days of darkness which is posted on uh, 444 prophecy news by cliff kaufman and mark chan so i'm gonna read to you instructions for three days of darkness and explanation of what is going what is about to happen in those three days of darkness so First of all, there will be extreme and odd red skies. So, I'm reading. Get into your heart. Uh, get into your house. Gather your immediate family, pets, water, canned food, and do it quickly. Prepare for three days of complete darkness outdoors. The power will be off. Do not venture out. Keep windows and doors shut and locked. Curtains drawn closed. Do not even attempt to look outside during the darkness. You will see the red skies beforehand. This will be a sign. Two, uh, I mean second, massive worldwide earthquakes. Stay in your house or the Goshen safe house. Uh, you were directed to, to by the Holy Spirit. If you are who you should be, your house will be protected from destruction supernaturally or you will be moved elsewhere to safe Goshen by the Holy Spirit. Either way, stay indoors. Prepare for the three days of darkness. You will feel the earth move. This will be a sign. Third, terrestrial cosmic worldwide event. Same as above, get into your house. If you are who you should be, then you will be protected supernaturally in your house. Again, prepare for the three days of darkness happening soon after a huge cosmic event. You will see the event. This will be a sign. Fourth, three day of darkness. What to do du during part one? Stay indoors. If you are who you are supposed to be, you will have light indoors. How, you ask? God will supply it supernaturally. In some cases, food and water will be supplied as well, 
on a case by case basis by God. On a case by case basis by God. Important, during the three days of darkness, you will hear strange things outside your home. You might even hear the familiar voice of a family member calling you to come outside and help them. Stop. Do not venture outdoors. It is a trick. Do not look out a window. It's not who you think it is. How, you ask? Because the Lord Jesus has instructed many messengers that we are not to venture outdoors or open the windows, curtains, or blinds. Here's why. At this time, during the three days of darkness, many powerful and extremely evil demons will have been released onto the earth. They are looking for anyone they might kill, possess, and terrorize. That includes you. These are freshly released wild-eyed devils right out of the pits of hell. They are extremely malevolent and hungry for human blood. They have been given license to murder, possess, terrorize, rape, burn, pillage, and torture anyone they find outdoors and unprotected by God. These demon spirits will manifest themselves in many shapes, forms, and sizes. Uh, they will take the form of extraterrestrials, ETs, hideous and repulsive forms that are frightening to look upon. These demons will even take the form of humans, both dead and alive. So don't be fooled. Five, uh, I mean fifth. Three days of darkness, what to do, part two. Gather your family around you. Explain to them what, what you know. Read your Bible to them. Pray together for protection. Stay in prayer as much as possible. Wait for the all clear when the daylight returns. Then seek out other Christians. Important. You may have a family member that is very close to the Lord Jesus disappear sometime during the first day of darkness. Do not freak out. It's a good thing. You will be informed of this by an angel that will appear to the rest of the family inside your house when it happens. Do not go outside looking for that person. The Lord Jesus has taken that person who is one of the God's elect a way to a safe place for special training and edification. Not to worry. That person will, retur will return after the three day of darkness has ended. You will see that loved that loved one again. Follow their instructions to the letter and everything will be fine. What's next? What do we do now after the three days of darkness? Six. The harvest begins, not the rapture yet. This will be a very busy time for the elect of the bride of Christ to begin to bring in, to bring in all those lukewarm Christians that were clueless about Jesus' plan. It will also be a time to win souls, lost souls for Jesus. A special group of multiple thousands of chosen Christians called the elect will begin roaming all over the earth supernaturally to start winning people to Christ. They will be sent out and work in groups of two. These elect will also be assisted by millions of God's warrior angels that will be stationed on earth for this particular harvest period. period. These angels will afford protection and logistics for those new people being saved and brought into the kingdom. These new Christians that are being saved will be ushered to safe locations around the world to wait for the end of that particular harvest period. This harvest period will probably last 40 to 50 days. The exact number of days is up to Father God and has not specially been revealed to his messengers. The special elect members of the bride will be impervious to any and all of Satan's attacks while they work the harvest around the world. These ones can travel at light speed, arriving anywhere instantly. God people everywhere around the world will recognize those chosen ones by sight. They will glow 
with their new glorified bodies given to them personally by Jesus himself. People that want to be saved or redeemed and want to know Jesus as their personal Savior will run and flock to these elect ones. The people that want it will be ministered to at that time and be led to receive Jesus. These elect are untouchable by the enemies of God. They can go anywhere and do anything. They cannot be stopped by walls, fences, bullets or bombs. They can reach out to any person no matter well, uh, where they might be kept or imprisoned. These elect have a very specific job to do and a limited amount of time to do it. They are one they uh, I mean they're on a mission for God and nothing will stop them from accomplishing it accomplishing it to God's full contentment. Sixth, at harvest and the rapture. Keep in mind that during this particular harvest time, much is happening in the world. Chaos will be the order of the day. There will be mass destruction from many natural disasters that are taking place worldwide, earthquakes, flooding, volcanic eruptions, wars, tsunamis, food shortages, fresh drinking water will be non-existent. Looting, murders, demonic manifestations will be commonplace. Governments will be collapsed around the world. Nothing will be the same. No one will be safe outside of God's hand of protection. But there is something even more devastating that happens during the three days of darkness. And that is all, and that is all young children under the physical and spiritual age of accountability will be taken from the earth by God's angels. This will cause worldwide mass pandemonium when parents cannot suddenly locate their babies and young children. Many parents will lose their minds. Many will, will attempt suicide. Many will curse God and die. But many will also thank God that their children do not have to go through the horror taking place on the earth at that time. Those parents will seek God's help and forgiveness and come to know Him and join their children once again after the harvest is over and they are raptured. Then comes the rapture, the time or day no one but God the Father knows. This is officially known as the second rapture since technically a kind of mini rapture took place when, God's, when God removed His Comparatively small group of chosen elect during the first day of darkness for training. Remember them? If not, go back and reread from the beginning. Now, I know a lot of this stuff is extra biblical and if it freaks a lot of very good folks out. This includes me as well of at times. But Christians need to remember that God is doing a new thing and we are in the very last days. We are definitely the last generation. Everything I mentioned above will, ha will happen so extremely fast, you won't even know what hit you. Even now, things are starting to snowball on us. We can barely keep up with uh, what is happening on huge scales around the world as it is. It is all going down right now, right here and in our faces. And guess what? We have front row seats to this worldwide calamity about to go down. So, scream and holler all you folks want, but this is happening right now. Just because you don't believe in something doesn't stop that something from happening while you're in ob oblivious denial. When this all goes down, I hope and pray you will recall my words and do the right thing. And believe me, this is going to happen so quick, you will freak out. You will panic. You will get on your knees in front of God and beg Him for help. But that's only if you survive the initial and constant destruction going on around the world at that time. Best advice? Don't wait. Get right, right now, with Jesus Himself. Not hard to do. He is listening. Do it and get it done with. 
Become free in Jesus so that no matter what happens, you got this covered man. For once in your life, really be smart. Be smart. Do the right thing. Don't follow the crowd like you usually do. Do the right thing. This one time. This is your moment. Jesus is saying, let's do this. Come home to me. I got you. Don't wait, kid. And this is by Cliff Kaufman and Mark Cham. Um, just I want to read to you now what Mark Chan has to say. Okay, now Mark Chan. Good summary of many important points, Cliff Kaufman. Uh, please allow me to write a few points on uh, on clari of clarification, if you don't mind. First, from what the Lord has confirmed to me, the young ones under the age of accountability will be taken to safety in a rapture situation before the great darkness commences, not during the three days of darkness. They will not be here to suffer the fear of these terrible signs which initiate the great darkness. Second, as for the elect who are gathered away first during the great darkness, we won't be going up to heaven at that time, uh, as our training will be on earth. Hence, it isn't strictly an uh, ascension-type rapture. Third, we have to remember that God the Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, will be visiting every living soul on earth during the time of the great darkness. They will remove the spiritual veil and every person will have to make a choice then to either believe and receive Jesus Christ into their lives or to persist in their sin and rebellion. This is the most important reason that God is bringing about the great darkness, to reveal himself and his son to this sleeping and sinful world when all electronics, electrical items Vehicles and all forms of modern distraction, distractions will be quiet and still, like Psalm 46.10 says. So, this is at the end of this message, which I, wrote, uh, which I read to you, uh, which was posted on uh, 444 Prophecy News. It's called, uh, the title is Message 65 Before and After the Three Three Days of Darkness by Cliff Kaufman and Mark Chen. So, dear brethren in Christ, I uh, read to you this prophetic warning, and it is up to you what you what you will do. And I leave it up to you, so that you, as the Lord, uh, as if this is true or what to do, and uh, pray for this. And I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and Savior. Amen.